Good morning, Facebook family and LICMC. We are here again for another beautiful day on Sunday morning with our Sunday morning service. And we have Dr. John and we have Miss Janice. How are you both doing? Amen. Doing well and bless. God bless everybody. Amen. Well, right now, we are going to get started. We need to move a little quickly today. So we're going to ask Miss Janice to say a prayer and sing a song. Then we'll go right into our, I'll tell you what the subject is. Hi, family. Father God, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I thank you for this day, a day I've never seen before. Thank you so very much for allowing me just to wake up to see another brand new beautiful day. Lord, I pray for all of those on the sound of my voice, and I thank you, Lord, and I pray that you continue to keep your honor of protection around us. Help us to realize that you love us, and above you there is no other. Lord, thank you for sending your only begotten son. Thank you, Lord, so very much for loving me. I'm making it personal now because, Lord, I am so grateful. You didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord. Not because you love just me, but you love us all. You laid down your life, no man took it. And I thank you, and I take that and not like it, Lord. Lord, you, I, I, I'm just so sorry for the way you had to do it. And I'm so sorry for all the pain you went through, Lord. I am sorry for the way we treated you back then, and I'm sorry for the way that we treat you today. By your stripes, I am healed. My mind is healed. My body is healed. My soul is healed. My spirit is healed. Lord, my heart is healed. I thank you, Lord, so very much. And I pray for all of those who don't know that they can do that yet. I pray for all the sick, the shut in, and the bereaved everywhere. I pray for all of those that stand in need of prayer and don't know you and a pardon of their sins. Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that you just be with all of those that are trying to get to know you, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that your will be done. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm only human, and I'm just a woman. Help me to live in what I can be. Thank you so much for that one day at a time. And uh, we're here today. We're going to hear Dr. John for about 10 to 12 minutes, and then we'll carry on after that because he has services this morning. But our topic today is safety in the kingdom of God. And it's part one of what's going to come up uh, for us on next time, which is all things work together for good to them that love God. But this one is coming from our Lord's Prayer. Safety in the kingdom of God. And as the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'm sorry. Let's go back. That's my favorite one. That's not the Lord's Prayer. But anyway, we're going to go back to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That is um, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Safety in the kingdom of God. It says it all in that prayer. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. John. Good morning, Dr. John. Well, good morning to you, to Sister Janice. Uh, <laughs> when, you, when you went to the 23rd Psalm, I said, did I read the wrong speech? No, you didn't. That's just one of my other but, favorites. <laughs> well, oh, no. What, what I'm saying is I thought about that when you, when you started quoting that. I'm like, that is such a perfect uh, scripture. Oh, well, it is. For being safe in his arms. Amen. Amen. Uh, but that, of course, is not to negate what we call the Lord's Prayer. Right. And before I get started, I... I would just like to say how much uh, I have appreciated Sister Janice, especially with her prayer and yes. her song today. Amen. Uh, I don't even know if she knows how profound that prayer was. Uh, and of course, every day we need to say, Lord, help me to take one day at a time. Amen. So we, we have to understand that this is what we should be asking each and every morning. And then turn around and say after that, Lord, what would you have me to do? But speaking of being safe uh, in God's kingdom, being safe in his arms, that there's, there's so much there. Uh, and, and actually, this is we call this the Lord's Prayer because he's the one that gave the disciples this style of prayer. But in all actuality, it is not his prayer because Jesus would have never prayed Forgive us our debts, forgive us our sins, forgive us our trespass. He, he had no need of that because there was no guile in his mouth and there was never any inkling of sin in his soul. So what he, what he did, he was explaining to the disciples how to pray to God, how to stand before, how to speak to God the Father. And in this, we, we don't seem to realize at all times that our communication with God and how we communicate with him uh, actually decides what type of protections we will have from him. And if you really want to know uh, a person's uh, spirituality or what their relationship is with God the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, all you truly have to do is listen to them pray. And, and the reason why I say this is because when we pray, you you can tell, and, and I know you've heard it so many times, someone just gets up and spouts something that they've heard a thousand times, and it's just something that they just do automatically. It, or, you know, I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord, and so to keep. I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, and so, I so to take. Amen. You know, there, there's nothing there that is truly meant when it is given in that type of attitude. But all when you begin to think about uh, the prayer that Jesus gave to disciples to tell us to pray in that type of manner. We have to come out uh, acknowledging, first of all, God all by himself, our Father. He, he's just not somebody that hangs around just like somebody's done, done a creator. He didn't say, uh, you know, uh, uh, our, our creator. He said, but our Father. That is a closest, that is a kinship with him. And when we think about a kinship, when you have a parent that truly loves, and we know that he loved us because it says, John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world. But when we begin to think about the kinship that you would have with a parent, and most of all, a heavenly parent, that means that we have to have love for them, and the, the responsibility of God is to protect us as his children. So he said, our Father, which art in heaven. Then I want him to know, I want everybody to know that simply he is just not our Father, but he sits in heavenly places. He sits high and he looks low, even though he is omnipotent in all places. His power goes through everywhere. He is omnipresent. It is just something about him. Wherever you are, he always is. Wherever you go, he was already there before you got there. He was there while you were there. He was there when you left. And when you go anywhere else, he is still there. He's just there is everywhere. But then we turn right back around and he begins to praise him. He begins to lift him up. He begins to magnify him. The old church adage is when praises go up, that blessings come down. And it is nothing greater.
greater than to be blessed by God. And he even let us know in the scripture that when we think about his goodness, when we think about his protection, he even said in the scripture, if, if a child asks for a fish, would the, would the parent give him a serpent? We, of course, know he would not. If he asked for an egg, would the parent give him a scorpion? No, when you ask of the Father, it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. He is so good all by himself. This is the reason why he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down the same. That is what we always say. But I want you to know that even over in the midnight hour, when the skies are dark, when everything looks great, when you can't necessarily see your way, walking wherever you are, he's still there, and he's still worthy to be praised. Uh, and when I think about that, I even go back to think about Job. Job was in his turmoil. He was being su in such suffering all types of ways. But he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And when we begin to trust in God, we are trusting our faith is invited in him and he sends down his holy spirit that we might be a part of him and he part of us but when we look at this thing we look at all the things they said but then here's the thing i'm, I'm going to skip down just a little bit because it said lead us not into temptation well why would god lead us into temptation but because of the way that it was translated what it really meant was don't let us be led into temptation in other words simply guide our path everywhere that we go if there's a stumbling block let me find a way around it if there is a stumbling block i can't go around it god give me the strength to leap over that thing whatever it is that i need to do to be in you and you and me i need you to do it right now this is the reason why i always love to sing this song search me lord search me lord when i say god search me i want him to look down on the inside and then a song simply says if you find anything in me that shouldn't be taken out, God, and strengthen me, I want to be right, I want to be saved, I want to be whole. When we look at God in his fullness, and we look at God not with the eyes of a natural man, but we look at him with a spiritual mind, we can see his greatness. We can see how wonderful he is. We can see that he does, again, sit high, but he stands low down with us. We understand that whatever it is, whatever befalls us, that he is there, and even through his son, he always says that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. He won't even leave our seed begging bread. So wherever you are, whatever the trouble is, I say call on Jesus. Call on Jesus in the morning. Call him in the noonday. Call him even in the midnight hour. Because when you call him, and you call him of truth, of faith, when you're standing on the solid rock of his word, when you're standing in that realm that no man can reach with peace, with joy, with happiness, he is going to answer you. He will deliver you. Even the Bible said that this poor man cried through sick, calling out the word of prayer, and he answered and delivered him from all of his troubles. Now I can joy in God. I will lift up his name even in the midnight hour. When the morning comes, I will begin to praise him even more because God is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my master. He is my keeper. And whatever I need of him, he tells me to simply ask and he shall bring me in. And then, oh, my God, when I leave this earth, when it's time for me to leave this place, he says, come unto me, all you that labor. And even before that, he lets us know that he will bring me into his rest at all times times when i stand up i can stand before him knowing that i have been justified by faith knowing that he has looked down he has cleansed me of all my sins he has purged me with hyssop he has touched me he has washed me through and through and that's the reason why I, as the sister was saying i'm so sorry that we had to do the things that we did to him before he was crucified. I'm so sorry that he had to go to the cross. I'm so sorry for even the way that we treat him even now, not being able to say, Lord, you have your way. Lord, whatever you do, I praise you. I thank you. I lift you up. I'm so sorry, but I have to say I'm so glad he did. For God did so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And because he has everlasting lives, we know that all power is in his hand. And through that power, through that spirit, through that mighty Holy Ghost, through that baptism that he 
instills in us, we know that we can do all things through him that strengthens us because he loves us, because he shall not bring back one word to himself, but his word, once he has given it, it shall be forever and ever and ever. And because of this, we, regardless of what we do, we shall be, if we simply have faith in him, we shall always be safe in his arms. Back to you, Sister Lord. Wow. Amen, Dr. John. We thank you so much for that powerful message of being safe, safe in the kingdom of God. And Dr. John, we know that you have to go, so we pray that God bless you as you travel today. You want to tell everyone where you're going to be this morning? Yes, God bless you, Sister Linda. I am going to be at Christ Love Tabernacle uh, Missionary Baptist Church. It is located at the corner of Grand River and Myers in the city of Detroit. The address is 12612, again, 12612 Grand River. Uh, they are celebrating their 32nd church anniversary. We are having today both a or both an 11:15 and three o'clock services. Uh, the 11:15 service that will be brought by Minister Rick Williams, and the three o'clock service will be brought by none other than the seasoned preacher himself, Bishop Eugene Watkins. So, if you can get there, we would enjoy your company. Come, bring your mask. If you don't have it, we will supply them. We have all the hand sanitizer. Uh, if you want to wear gloves, we have those too. God bless you, and we'll see you there. Thank you, Dr. John. God bless you, and thank you for being with us this morning. And uh, as me and Ms. Janice saying, I will continue to carry on this subject, safe in the kingdom of God. So we thank God for Dr. John. Good morning, Evangelist Christian Berry, and good morning, uh, Emily, Margie, is God bless you and everyone else that might be looking at this time. <laughs> that was a powerful message, uh, Miss Janice. I thank you for being here with us today. And I just wanted to kind of carry on with that. That topic came to me just out of, when you think about how the world is today, all the things that goes on in the world, and the scripture says, live, be in the world, but not of the world. So that means we don't, we can live in this world, but we can um, um, be blessed by the Lord to be in another realm. So it's another spiritual realm. You know, and a lot of times people maybe think the kingdom of God is after you leave here, which we do know that there is another place for us with God. But there's a kingdom of God that is live, living, and well right now here. On why, that's why he says be in, in the world, but not of the world. And once we accept uh, um, the Lord and come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, then God blesses us to be in his kingdom, his way of living, his spirituality, his place where uh, we're safe from the things that if we were in the world and have turned ourselves over to the world or to involve the world, that uh, the enemy can come, attack, steal, kill, and destroy. But in the kingdom of God, while we're living here on this earth, God protects us. He keeps us from all seeing and seeing hurt, harm, and danger. And you can tell once you accepted Christ. The difference in your way of living, the difference of the ambience of the spirit, you can tell the difference in your life that God just takes you, your spirit in you, your flesh changes with your spirit because the mind and the spirit of God will, uh, in Romans 12, 1, it says he, he, he wants us to be uh, perfected in him as we, as we um, totally give ourselves over unto God. So I know that you can tell that there's a change. A piece of boy, there's a change in my life. Things are different. You know, if things can be all around you falling all apart, doing whatever, but because of the grace of God and because you made the choice to choose God, you accepted that wonderful gift that you cannot buy. And that's what you were saying about Miss Janice, about what Jesus went through for us, that we, we uh, love him and appreciate and adore him but we also, when we, if we love the Lord, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So then we begin to live according to his word, be obedient to his word. And you begin to appreciate and be committed to the Lord. Uh, and it's so thankful that he did what he did. And God is sorry for everything. You know, even for people say, well, I didn't do anything. But that's part of our being accepted in 
to the body of Christ. So we ask God to forgive us for our sins, whatever they might be, things knowingly, unknowingly, and all the time. But the kingdom of God rescues us and salvages us from the world of destruction so that we can be free in so many different ways, free from sin only God can do. And that's in the kingdom of God. That's where we have freedom in our spirit. We have the spirit of joy in our heart. We are full of joy, the joy of the Lord that you can, it says it is, you can't even explain how great it is. Words can it not explain the wonderful joy of the Lord, even in the midst of situations that we still do encounter. But the difference is when you have God Almighty in your life, when you're in the kingdom of God, when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you have accepted him in your life, then it just changes everything about you in your in your spirit, mind, in your heart. And all that, even the scripture tells us this. It says, keep your own bodies under subjection. That means we have control over what we do. So, but we need the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost in us so that we can uh, obey the Word of God. So that we can feel the strength of the Lord, be led by the Lord. And we all, all you got to do is give over your, your heart. It says, the con, con, uh, contrite spirit of the godly sorry to the Lord. And also to ask God to just, we, we know that we believe in Him. And just to take us in, and Lord, I commit myself to you. I want to be yours. That's when Jesus committed himself over. Uh, he committed himself over. Like you said, Miss Janice, he didn't, uh, he didn't just say, okay, I'm going to, uh, fight this thing. And I'm not, I'm not I'm coming off this cross. So I'm not, I'm not about to take this. He didn't do that. God, uh, Jesus didn't do that. He, he went on and did what his father said, even though for one second, he said, Lord, God, father, do it. I have to do this. I know you said I have to do this. So, but he did it. And so because of Jesus Christ and all that he did, we also have to commit ourselves over to God and make a, make a commitment unto him that we want to live for him. And that first step is John 3, 16. And that's the very first step. We keep, you know, saying that it seems like it's a short scripture. It's very powerful. But that is the key and the way in. And that is in the way into God's kingdom. Uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And for whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that says it all to him. Then that is the kingdom of God. That's safe in his arms. And the Lord will bring you through, get you through some things. The Lord you'll see. And we go to Psalms again, 91, where those things will come. And you'll see destruction. You'll see all kind of things going on. And you'll sit and you'll see it, but it said, None shall come nigh thee. None shall come nigh thee. And it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand. So all these things that we see that's going on, God is still buffering you, covering you. You are safe in God's kingdom. So we um I think Miss Janice is gone. So we just wanted, we're so thankful um, that she was there with us. I see that she's not, she's not with us at this time, but I do praise and thank God for her and the prayer and the song that she gave us. And I really praise Dr. John. I tell you, he can get a message through in a minute. So you know what he did in about 12 minutes, Dr. John, he carried on and he gave us a powerful, powerful message about being safe in God's kingdom, like he said, safe in God's arms. So today we're just encouraging you to even say the Lord's prayer. Say that, because if you say them, listen to it. I think we've said it so many times, it's kind of, you know, some people take it for granted. But if you listen to the Lord's prayer, when you say it, read it, it covers everything. It even starts off with in kingdom come. It's in there. You know, it is all about our Father God. So we encourage you today to accept Jesus Christ again. And remember to read John 3.16. That's your way in. It's telling you if you believe that Jesus Christ, and this God is only asking, do you believe? He said, if you believe it. And you can say yes. And that means you're not at the point where I, I don't know. 
But if he said, do you believe? Just give in to the Lord. Uh, read the word. Listen, do you believe? Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which is the only way to get to God. That's what the scripture says. That's the only way. If you don't believe it, then you're missing out on God the Father. You have to believe that Jesus Christ did what he did. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died. He was crucified through death and rose again which was a plan of his father and he lives right now, right now. And he sent us a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And so we just praise and thank God for all that he's done for us today. We just implore to you, come join us and accept the uh, God into your life. Accept that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Ask God to forgive you for your sins and be godly sorry and believe. And just believe make the first step say yes i believe i believe in god i believe in jesus i believe he did what he did and you know what he did it for you 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 me all of us so all of us have that equal opportunity to join the kingdom of god and be blessed by god god doesn't pick and choose who's better who's not better how you look if you're a girl if you're a guy whatever he doesn't he doesn't we are all his children and he said he loves us all because we all belong to him, even lost this world. So, but he just gave us a will, a will to choose which way we want to go. If we want to be with God or we are ignoring that and we want to choose something else. But you know what? We all still belong to him. But in order to receive the blessings and be covered by the blood of Jesus, be in the safety of the kingdom of God, we need and we have to accept God except Jesus and the Holy Ghost. So we thank you once again for tuning in. And we love you all that it might have been looking. And we want to say thank you. Evangelist Christian Barry was watching. And we thank you. Um, Margie Edge, I love you too. That's my cousin in Ohio, Emily. And we just thank you, Dr. John. Thank you, Miss um, Janice. We love you, Dr. John. We love you, Miss Janice. And we love you, Facebook family. We have love the LICMC, and oh, we love the Lord God Almighty just provided us with another moment in time that we can actually talk about him, minister to him. We thank God for blessing us and be able to talk about him today. Y'all have a blessed, safe day. Remember to, to join Dr. John today. Um, the church is open, and they're ready for people to come in to have a good time and hear the word of God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to this morning's service with yours truly. London. God bless you. Be safe.